When it's freezing cold, I think one really needs to eat a good set of dumplings. My friend Yusuf actually recommended us to go have some dumplings. Say hi, Yusuf. What's up? And uh, we're gonna go to our first spot in the middle of Chinatown, especially because it is actual Chinese Chinese. It's not Chinatown dumplings, which we'll have soon. This is Chinese dumplings. Let's go. Sometimes you have dumplings that are like very pasta-y, mm -hmm. but this one's stuffed to the brim. Let's try it out. It's super cheap. So let's talk about price. Yes, this is very cheap. This was four dollars. This was two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. That's crazy. It's crazy, and this was uh six dumplings, and that's a huge plate of soup. It's, yeah, it's huge. Usually you will pay like fourteen, twelve bucks for this. So freaking good. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, not oily, super thin, stuffed to the brim. But now, let's go have more classical dumplings. All right, let's go. Old school Chinatown. Let's, let's go. go. The first place we visited was Chinese food from the Fuzhou province. That's where Chinese immigration mostly came from in the 1980s after the U.S. lifted the ban from Chinese immigration in 1965. But now we're in the original Chinatown, which dates back all the way to the 1870s. And the very first uh, Chinese immigrants that came over mostly to the west side area of the United States, California, to build the railroads were from the Guangdong province. However, for nearly 100 years, Chinese immigration was completely banned from the U.S. until 1965, and then the floodgates opened. At first, it was mostly Taiwanese and Hong Kong Chinese coming into the U.S., and then followed by the Fuzhou uh, people of China. This right here is the coolest street in all of New York City. This is Doyer Street. It used to be called the Bloody Angle. Right next to the Bloody Angle, let's go have as I said, some old school Chinatown bites and also a little bit of General Tso's chicken. So Yusuf can eat some chicken as well. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to head over to Zhou Shanghai. And it's one of Chinatown, it's one of the favorite places for many people who come here to Chinatown. Let's check it out. Where does the dumpling come from? We gotta go back 1,800 years ago to ancient China. And there was a epidemic of people getting frostbites, especially right around the ears in a small little village. And the medicine man by the name of Zhang Zhao Zhang decided to find a way to better administrate the medicine to many of the people suffering from this frostbite. Consuming a bunch of herbs and spices and meats wasn't really that convenient. So he decided to make a tiny little pasta, little pasta little pastry like this, that in the shape of an ear, originally called jiaozi, and make fill it up with a bunch of herbs, spices, and meat. And that was the medicine. And that's how he administered the medicine to all the people of the village. No one actually knows if it cured the frostbite, but people became obsessed with this tiny little ear-shaped pasta thing now called the dumpling. And now we have dumplings, and they spread all around China and continue spreading through the steppes region of central China, especially as the Mongolians took over and made one of the largest empires in the world. And they're the main reason why we see dumplings, not only in China, we see dumplings all the way in Poland, we see dumplings as far south in, in areas like uh, Turkey. We see dumplings all around the world. The quintessential American dish. Yep, I said American because you can find General Tso's chicken all around America. It's not actually Chinese. It's Chinese inspired by a dish made in Taiwan. And you can find a whole epic story about it on a Netflix documentary called Searching for General Tso's Chicken. But this started here in Chinatown. It's from Chinatown. It's quintessential American. And I love it because it's the perfect combination of sweet and tangy and sour all combined into one beautiful dish of glistening orange chicken and very puffy broccoli. Stuff you won't even find really in China. You'll find chicken in China, but you won't find broccoli in China. <laughs> but there we go. Let's try let's try the general sauce. 
So I think this is one of the best places for General Tso's. Even though it's kind of hard to judge because General Tso's is kind of a, more of a fast food. One, I can tell this place is actual chicken. Because sometimes you have General Tso's, you, you may have your doubts. <laughs> Two, the sauce is actually very well balanced. It's not like super creamy or sugary. Sometimes it tastes like a bunch of brown sugar just poured on top of the chicken. This one's a little bit more balanced. And two, it has a good spicy kick to it. So, especially with the chilies and everything. If you're eating general salsa, this is not pure sugar, so you have a little bit of spicy kick to it. It's actually a great combination. So definitely try general salsa chicken here, Joe Shanghai. So Yusef just mentioned that this looks a lot like Panda Express. That's a good yeah. point because um, the reason we have so much like Chinese food all around America is because once they started making Chinese food very popular here in New York City in the late 1800s, mm -hmm. people wanted something kind of exotic. Yeah. So all Americans were coming from, uh, New Yorkers were coming from all around New York and coming here to Chinatown to have some chop suey. Mm -hmm. Chop suey was not what you think it is. It wasn't some crazy exotic Asian dish. Mm -hmm. Chop suey actually meant leftover. Bits and pieces. Bits and ends. So chop suey was actually the leftover. That's crazy. And they made it into a fancy Chinese American dish. That's insane. But after chop suey, many years later, General Tso's chicken took inspiration from the Taiwanese immigrants. And that's why we have General Tso's all around America. Including Panda Express. Which, uh, I am so full. Luckily, we have a long journey ahead of us because this Chinatown is not the largest. It's the original, but not the largest. We are going right now to the largest Chinatown in New York City, one of the largest Chinatowns in the entire world, all the way to Flushing. So I'm about to break Yusef's seven train virginity. Yusef, you're gonna ride the seven train for the first time? Yes. Oh man, how you feel going to real New York? Because I'm excited. every other New York you've seen is fake. This is, this is the real New York <laughs> right here on the 7 train. We're going to hear Chinese, we're going to hear Spanish, we're going to hear Nahuatl, we're going to hear uh, German, Irish, Turkish, Turkish <laughs> Lebanese. We're going to hear over a hundred different languages here on this train. All right, I'm let's go. That, that, ¿Está listo? Okay, tú estás listo, qué bien. <laughs> Right now, we are passing through the most diverse area in the entire world. Over 120 nationalities are represented here, and over 800 languages are spoken all throughout Queens. Welcome to Flushing Chinatown, the biggest Chinatown in all of New York City. It started becoming super popular when a bunch of Chinese started coming uh, in mass during the 1980s. And ever since then, it's exploded in population where you barely even see American names anymore. So let's go have some proper Chinatown dumplings. But do you know the password? You know the password? Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, that's correct. <laughs> Dollar. <laughs> so it's right through the air. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Where do you think this dumpling place is? So we'll, we'll let the viewers guess where it is. Okay, right there. I think it's there, okay. Yeah, and that's about it. Come over here. Not this. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's crazy. It's not, it's not an a, a opiate then. Don't worry. Oh my god. Bubble tea, one dollar. Here it is. That's crazy. The most hidden dumpling place in New York City, right down there. It's like Chelsea Market. Yeah. Chelsea Market in Chinatown. Hey! So super flavorful. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, very flavorful. That was a lot of food, Ariel. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I got so much food that <laughs> I, almost, almost I almost rolled over because <laughs> I had so much food. 
Yeah, so the food was great. The dumplings were just amazing. I think from the three uh, locations that we went, the last location was my favorite. Yeah. Uh, from the interior, really? from the interior, I would say <laughs> the first interior was actually better than the third place that we went. We yeah, we didn't talk too much about the interiors. But, yeah, but two two of the three interiors were very uh, not 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 so pleasing. Really, really terrible. Yeah. I mean, when we went to the first place with Ariel, I actually thought, what the fuck is this place? Seriously, it smelled really disgusting inside too. It does it does like? But the food was good. Yeah, the food was really good. You know. I mean, only found one and, bone and very cheap when you think about it you <laughs> yeah. know like very cheap the food was really great the second place that we went mm. was actually my favorite of course you know it's mm. very clean it feels like more uh, like a restaurant experience yeah, it, Rick's, more, yeah. Yeah, it's more it feels like a, Rick's, a restaurant it feels like more yeah. the real deal with the more, family exactly you can go like maybe some after after parties you know yeah go there hang out especially when you <coughs> had a very good night of drinking or just hanging out with friends i think it's a great way to end the night correct at joe shanghai yeah exactly and then the third place the dumplings are terrific i mean they're really they're really amazing good. yeah they're really good and the, super juicy and, and <laughs> super watery cheap. it's a wonderful yeah super cheap too i mean the place is just like run down it's like <laughs> we, we didn't want to go around the corner of, <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, of, the, of the place over there i don't and they barely know english so you'll she, have a she didn't speak at all english yeah. <laughs> like it took us maybe 50 minutes to get a fucking dump, dumpling you know so you'll, you'll you'll have a little bit of a challenge yeah try it to. felt it felt really weird actually i think <laughs> Uh, since what was the guy's name that uh, make that place right now very up and common? The Asian guy? Oh, uh, that was Strictly Dumpling. Yeah. yeah, Strictly Dumpling did the video about that location that we went. But uh, I actually covered it a year before he yeah, did. Yeah, so, so Aaron is the real deal. <laughs> he did it first. So what's the name again? T uh, Which one? The Galaxy the, Dumpling? No, the guy. The guy. Oh, Mikey Chen. Mikey Chen? Mikey Strictly Chen. Dumpling. Yeah, Strictly Dumpling. He was the first. Just, I was there before yeah. Mikey Chen. It's a fact. The OG. Check, no. check, check out the <laughs> your Facebook. Yes. But yeah. I want to say that after he did the video, that that uh, that location got very like hyped right now. Yeah. So even people were saying that a lot of uh, like how do you say it, white people? <laughs> yeah, there was a, there was yeah, literally yeah. a bunch of white people there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be too racist. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of white people are there right now and that's why I think the the, the, the woman that worked there yeah. she was just like overwhelmed with all the <laughs> there's way too many people they yeah. were like asking for a bunch of different things yeah, yeah. and, and like, they might come with high expectations yeah. so they might they, I, I saw like a couple asking for a bunch of oh different God, toppings best, yeah. <laughs> no no go there and order the simple pork and chive dumplings yeah, or the exactly. lamb dumplings yeah, the, the lamb dumplings was yeah. really good and they also have beer which I recommend if you want to have it with yeah. the beer yeah all right well thank good, you so much good luck going to those places because they're both adventurous and fun yes definitely <laughs> i mean the number three is definitely adventurous for sure yeah and this, it feels very far away but it's not that 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 far it's like no, 30 I mean, minutes the seven trees right here where we are right now in bryant park i think you'll get there in 30 minutes correct those were the top three dumpling places that me and yusef really enjoyed yusef thank you so much for joining me along for this vlog <laughs> um check them out they're amazing two of them are right around chinatown the other one is in flushing queens highly recommend them but there's a bunch of other dumpling places let me know what's your favorite place for dumpling in new york city i'm ariel with urbanist keep being awesome and always keep on exploring